today I have five realistic oil painting techniques to share with you. When you sit down in front of your first oil painting or some of your first oil paintings, it can be really, really overwhelming. The most important thing that I think you should do is relax because you have to be patient with oil painting. Technique number one, frame the shot. So when you're looking at your scene, what I always do is I frame the scene with my hands. So <laughs> you can see it won't create perfect corners, but you can get the idea of the rectangle or the square or whatever that you're trying to compose. You can use your hands or you can buy a viewfinder that it's like a little rectangle thing that you can slide around and you can change. Oh, okay. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic that you can buy that uh, you can adjust the proportion of the painting you're trying to make. Technique number two. Once you're happy with the composition that you create with your hands, then grab a sketchbook and a pencil because you're going to create one of these. This is a value study. This will help you decide where the darkest darks and the Just spend about two to five minutes on this drawing to give you an idea of the value structure that you want your painting to have. Painting from life is the best way to get accurate color and accurate values in your painting. So even if you only have a little bit of time in front of your subject, try to take down some color notes with a plein air painting or watercolors sketch of some sort because when you take that photo home the value structure will be different than what you see on location and the colors will be grayer more desaturated a lot of the time i feel most comfortable staying on location for about 45 minutes to an hour so i can get as many color notes as possible down and then i take it back home to the studio where i can get the detail in it can be tempting to get right into color immediately but I find that my paintings are more successful and I'm more happy with the process of painting if I've made sure that my sketch is good enough first. Make sure your drawing that you've transferred to your canvas has all the information that you're going to need in order to have a successful painting. Take some time after you think you're finished with your sketch to look at your sketch and consider will I be able to paint every area of this with confidence. Because what you don't want to do is set yourself up, especially when you're painting in the field for the duration of the whole painting. It's especially difficult to proceed with a painting when you've put a lot of wet paint down in an area and then you realize, oh crap, I've got to move everything. So make sure that your sketch contains everything you need in order to be successful. Technique number three. Once you're happy with your sketch, be loose. Understand that a good painting has lost edges where one shape, one color blends into another color and the human eye is very good at making sense of a painting even with very limited information. And it's more fun to look at a painting that makes you think a little bit more and puts your brain to work trying to put the pieces together. <clears throat> Technique number four. Take your time mixing your colors, especially the first color. The first color you should put on your canvas should be a desaturated color. It doesn't have to be the most gray color in the painting, but find a color that is not powerful orange or powerful green and take your time mixing that color and seeing as much color as you can in that desaturated color. This is a really good tip for beginners because it will prevent your painting from looking too neon or too gray right from the beginning. In the first half hour of painting, be fearless with color. Take your time mixing these colors, but be fearless. If it looks really blue, then mix it so that it is accurate to the blue that you're looking at. Even push it a little harder than, than you think that it might need to go. You can always desaturate colors later. It's much harder to bring a color back up to saturation. And it'll also give you an idea right in the beginning when you're mapping out the painting, what your paint colors are capable of. A lot of times you won't be able to mix exactly the color that you see because you've got ultramarine blue, but the 
still life has a clearly cobalt blue or cerulean or something like that. So you're going to have to make some compromises. Technique number five. The last technique is paint often. The more you paint, the more you exercise your brain to be a painter. Nothing can replace diligent practice. As you proceed with your painting practice over the coming years, find methods that make you enjoy the process of painting and methods that allow you to feel relaxed and not overwhelmed. Painting is really hard and finding ways to reduce stress during the painting process is really gonna help you become a better artist because you'll be able to make more and more paintings and feel more and more inspired. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hit subscribe if you wanna join me for future painting adventures and tips and tricks videos like this one.